Club at 22, the Rangers podcast is supported by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with code CLUB at 22. Your balls will thank you. Hello everyone uh, and welcome to Club Deck Corner here on Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. I am your host Scott Carney and I'm joined by Ali Pearson. Ali, how are you doing? Not too bad. Still got that bloody fashion cicala song stuck in my head <laughs> and repeat all the time. But um, I apart from that, just looking forward to having Rangers back on Thursday. Absolutely stuck in my head all week, mate. I've not sang a different song, I don't think, all week. Even in work, they play a radio, uh, and I still can't stop singing the Fashion Chicala song. Uh, Ryan Haymarsh, how's it going, mate? Yes, good. Uh, good to see you. Um, I'm the exact same. I reckon I'm getting to about five minutes without the song going through my head, so <laughs> that's, pro- that's progress. It's slowly wearing off, and then Rangers go and release a video with it as well, and you're like, brilliant, yes, of course. He comes from Zambia. So, yes, um, Club Act 22 is supported by Manscaped. Um, if you go to the manscaped.com, you will get 20% off uh, with free shipping with the code Club at 22 You would also be supporting our podcast, so we thank you very much. We're delighted to have the support of them, and me and Ryan are sporting the T-shirts tonight. Um, your balls will thank you, Ryan. Your balls will thank you, and Ali's balls won't thank him if he doesn't get that T-shirt on for the next pod. Yeah, I, I tried. <laughs> I, I, Ryan, I tried the products on Friday night straight away, and I was, um, I was, I thought it was quite good. To be honest, I did see it. Scotia was in the pub. I was sitting Ryan off camera. Scotia was in the pub on Sunday with his Manscaped T-shirt on in the pub, so he was promoting <laughs> in the in Helen's brought on Sunday night. Yeah, it was. The, the reason Scotia is not with us tonight is because Scotia has decided to manscape his whole body. So the next time he comes on, he's going to look like a, a shaved chimp or something like that. Next time we see Scotia, I think, to be completely honest. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. so gentlemen, um, we're going to do a wee bit of a different club deck corner um, this week. We had a, a show planned for last week's um, show. Um, it was for Alfredo Morelos reaching 100 Rangers goals. Obviously, that got put in the back burner due to the, the, the awful news about Walter. Um, but we didn't want to not do it. Um, I think it's quite important to do. And um, Alfredo's, as I say, one of the, the first, he's the first striker to do this since Kenny Miller. So I think he deserves a wee bit of praise. Uh, just before we get into that, um, obviously, if you want a reaction to the Motherwell game, <clears throat> We did a, a, a quite a long uh, post match on Sunday, a rather enjoyable one, probably our most enjoyable one of the season, to be completely honest. So you can go back and check that out. Um, but we we're not going to touch on that tonight. Uh, we will just obviously quickly touch on <clears throat> the fact that the Walter Smith's mem- memorial was announced. Uh, the club statement was the passing of Walter Smith has touched every member of the Rangers family, and the club can today update the plans are being put in place for a public memorial service. The memorial will take place on Friday the nineteenth of November at Glasgow. Cathedral. Um, please note this will be invite only and it will be uh, free to view via Rangers TV. Um, a private family funeral is to be held uh, for Walter on Wednesday the 3rd of November, which is tomorrow if you're listening to this on Tuesday, prior to the public memorial. Uh, as a club we ask privacy and respected by all supporters, the wider public and the media. It's the intention for the cortege to pass Ibrooks at 3.15, entering from the Helen Street side, driving the direction of Paisley Road West before rejoining the motorway. The club would like to put on record its thanks to our supporters, supporters of other clubs and the wider community for their kind words and support at this difficult time. So rather fitting, um, I think that it's going to be at um, Glasgow Cathedral. Um, it's pretty spectacular, to be honest. It shows just what a man he was. And as I said, Ibrooks will be, I imagine, lined um, for some distance uh, tomorrow um, when um, Walter passes. So, yeah, we are going to do a, a full podcast on Walter Smith, um, probably during the international break. The reason I'm not bringing it to you tonight is because I don't want to rush it. I, I want it to be properly done. I want it to... <clears throat> I want it to be... A good tribute to the man. Um, we'll also try to keep it quite lighthearted as well. We'll probably an up and down podcast, to be completely honest, but I didn't want to rush it. Uh, and I wanted to take my time to get it right. And the, the guys agreed. So that's why we're going to discuss Alfredo Morelos mostly tonight. But yeah, it will be a good podcast, but it'll probably be with you during the international break. So, gentlemen, we will move on to Alfredo Morelos. Um, so obviously, Alfredo 
100 goals, 101 goal now um, for Rangers. One million he cost the club. Um, he's the first striker to reach 100 goals since Kenny Miller. Though one, only one of their goals have came from the penalty spot. <clears throat> We've had our ups and downs from the loss. Uh, love it or hate him. Uh, some people hate him. Can't really understand why. Uh, this lad is uh, probably the best bit of business apart from Glenn Kamara, is the only one that I would think that would maybe rival it. I think Morelos' business has been pretty incredible. Um, he's the all-time leading goal scorer in Europe for Rangers now. Uh, he'll go down as one of the greatest strikers we've ever had, in my honest opinion. And to be honest, he starts back it up. So, Ali, put into terms what Alfredo Morelos has done for Rangers, if you can. He's done quite a lot. He's been here longer than I think we all thought he was going to be. That's his fifth season, is it, with us? Or Morelos? Mm-hmm. I think it's his fifth season with us. The last two, three years, there's been the rumours of him leaving pretty much every transfer window and he's still here. And he'll probably still be here to the summer, to be honest. But, nah, I mean, I think it was Johansson that probably seen him when he was under Cassino. He came from Finland. One million pound. Great bit of business to, to get him over and Obviously, his value his value now is is a lot higher. It possibly it possibly was higher a season or so ago when we were offered sixteen million, whatever it was, from I wasn't one of the French clubs at the time. Now, obviously, his contract's running slightly down, so I don't know what the value of him now would be. But no, nah, the amount of goals he scored in big goal, I mean, he scores big goals for us. A lot of big goals in Europe. You see, one hundred and one goals. One for the penalty spot. There's a reason why it's only one for the penalty <laughs> spot. <laughs> That's the only downside, say, Morelos, in terms of I don't find some penalties. And we've always said it in terms of Morelos. If he's got time to think about something, he usually misses it. It's when he doesn't have time. But he's a great player and he's pivotal to the way we play, especially with that front three up there. And he pulls defenders out position everything. But yeah, he's a fantastic player. And I just, I just love doing the the Morelos celebration every time he scores. Yeah, at me. Yeah. Um, I, I, wait, I wait till everybody sits down, mate, and it's me yeah, and you left standing see. at the club yeah. deck doing Alfredo to each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, Ryan, Pedro Cuxinha got a lot of things wrong, but Alfredo Morelos was one of the things that he got absolutely spot on. Hi, don't mention that name again. Let's keep this positive. <laughs> um, I love Alfie. I absolutely love him. As you said, we probably all went through our, our phases of, like I've had enough of him and fed up his temperament and stuff like that. But I think that I think we need to highlight with, with Alfie as he's improved every season since he joined us, whether it's his temperament or his finishing or his team play. You could, he's worked on something in his game and he's he's nearer the complete, much more nearer the complete player than he's ever been. Um, I still think, I know he had his was his highest tally was not last season, the season before. Season before, I, st- I think, yeah. Yep, I still think last season was his best season for us because, as Ali alluded to, the, the style we play, we need a striker, we need a centre-forward to pull defenders about the pitch to let Kent and another player and Tav expose the, expose the gaps, and he does that. Gerard's worked wonders with him, absolute wonders, and he's got the patience of a saint because it's, if you think of some of those sending offs and those Brown incidents, and I mean, it, it drove us crazy as fans. Imagine being his manager. They must have said to him so many times, listen, don't bite, don't bite when you're out here, you'll be all right, and he just straight out. and just. So Gerard's worked wonders with him because his temperament's so much better now. And now I think he's, I think Alfie's brilliant. People criticise him for his finishing. And he's not the best finisher at the club. He's probably not the second best finisher at the club. But he's our best striker and he suits our style of play. And no, I absolutely love him. He's became pivotal with the way we play football. The whole style around the way Gerard wants a philosophy. It's the fake, the false nine, I think they call it, the way Alfredo drops deep sometimes. And he's he's grown as a man. He's, he really has. And he has drove us all mental, let's be completely honest. I, I never, ever hated him. I always loved him. I never wanted his, his, his hot-headed side to leave him because I think he would take away some of the player but what he has managed to do now is control it and he uses it when he has to use it and 
him and Scott Brown hate each other. I think that's <laughs> pretty clear to see. Um, even against Aberdeen, I, a few times Morelos was running into the back of him. I'm like, Morelos, you're just, you're asking, you're at, it was beating, it was in charge. I was like, you're asking for beating to do something here. Um, so it, it does drive you mad in the wee bits, but the return that we've had for from him, I know he's the, he's the highest European goal scorer. Obviously, we've played 150 million qualifiers every single season. So obviously you've got to take that into account, but still to get there and to do that and to beat Coisley's record is quite remarkable um, for a young lad. And I think when he does finally go, he will be missed. I don't think there's really any doubt about it, but I do think he's got probably quite a big move in him, um, to be completely honest. And uh, I hope him, I hope he doesn't go, obviously, but um, at some point he, he, will, he will move on. But the... I absolutely adore Alfredo Morelos. He is everything to me. Yeah, I, I just absolutely love him. When he's firing, he is lethal, literally lethal. And he's gave us some nights to remember, which leads me on to uh, what I asked you lads to do for this show. Um, so something just a little bit different. I asked the guys before recording the pod, um, what was your favourite Alfredo, Alfredo Morelos goal and why? So I'm going to go first um, with this one. Uh, and this was, this was my... So yeah, my goal for those listening um, was the 7th of November 2019 and it was against Porto at Ibrooks. Um, the reason that I have chose this, um, there is a number of reasons uh, I love this goal. The technique he shows to control the ball uh, and to get the shot away. Even with his left foot, it was quite a, quite a finish. Uh, he, has, he was absolutely in fire that campaign, uh, as you heard in the, the commentary there. 11 goals uh, in, the Europe, in Europe so far. It was uh, He was absolutely on fire. His celebration was even more aggravated than usual. He nearly slid right out of the park. He slid that hard. Uh, and the crowd's reaction, the reaction from Gerard, um, and not to, for, not to forget the assist from my boy Ryan Jack. It was pretty incredible. I think it just sums up everything about Alfredo, this goal. Um, we had to win that game. We we kind of put ourselves up against it because we'd lost against young boys. Uh, so we kind of put ourselves up against it to get out of the group. Uh, but it helped Rangers run out to two now winners uh, that night. And uh, it ultimately got us out of the group stages, in my personal opinion, that goal. But Ali, your thoughts on this goal? This is um, this is Alfredo Morelos all over this. Yeah, I remember it well, that game. First half, first half, let me say we were brilliant first half. Um, but summed him up, he was, he was in fire that whole, like you said, that whole campaign. He got his at group stage, it was a league of war, so he's got that 90th minute goal or whatever it was. Um, great goal, he scored away in Porto. He scored, I think, two away in Fire Nord, was it, I think, possibly? Mm-hmm. I think who it was. Yeah. The two headers, yeah, two, wasn't it? Two headers. Um, I just everything he touched in the, in that European campaign he scored, and that was a hard one. A good 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 ball in for Jack, and the, the touch kind of it kind of bounces slightly up in front of him, and it hit it in the on the volley, it half volley, and it with the left foot in the corner. What, what a strike! And then Steve Davis wasn't he far behind him? Literally a couple of minutes later to <clears> pretty much cement the game, and that was a huge game that for us. And Porto are a good team. I mean, Portos are. Porto's a Champions League team. I mean, we said that against uh, Benfica the other last year. They're a Champions League team. Porto are as well. And it just shows the strides we'd made compared to previous seasons but to be beating Porto at home. And it just shows how, how important he was, especially that season to us, because he was scoring all the bloody goals for us. But that was a good one. I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I, where I sit, um, obviously, Ali sits a wee bit further along. Um, from me, so I sit on the halfway line and the good seats in the club deck, to be completely honest. Um, <laughs> but uh, Ryan, Alfredo Morelos in the Europa League, um, what a relationship he has with that tournament. Ah, he loves it. Gerard's said that a few times. He, he knows Morelos loves that stage and he doesn't put it in as many words, but I think he loves the stage because he knows all the big clubs are watching. They're all seeing that his name's popping up almost every game because he really he, he just loves that stage. He ran Porto ragged those two games. Absolutely ragged. His physicality against them, it was everything. Uh what do you call the boy? Pepe. Pepe that was sent a half of them, wasn't Pepe. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um oh, I gave him a torrid time and 
that goal for me just epitomises it's a perfect Alfredo Morelos goal. If he's running through on goal and he's got all the time in the world, I get the fear he's going to miss. But see, just <laughs> that instinct, touch, hit it, that's him. He's He's got that class and it's his left foot as well. And uh, he's, uh, He absolutely loves the Europa League and let's hope he, let's hope he continues that um, on Thursday night for us. Yeah, let's hope so. I think it's just it, it's everything about Alfredo Morelos. The the first touch is, I mean, it's great to kill the ball. He's kind of fallen away from the ball as he strikes it as well and still manages to get it in at the far corner. The only place he probably could have put it to score, to, to be honest, and when we needed the we needed the goal to get his going, it was Alfredo that done it. And it's just his celebration in that as well. He's points to the ground, points to the jersey. This is this is his ground there. I absolutely loved that goal. Um, I think I probably burst my dad's eardrum again with that goal, to be completely honest as well. Uh, just screaming in his ear. But yeah, that that was my choice that's my, my particular favourite Ali we'll move on to yours mate I will play the clip and then you can take us through your goal Morelos making himself available he's beaten Brown it's Morelos oh pick that out smashed in by Alfredo Morelos he broke his old firm duck across at Parkhead and now he scored against Celtic here at Ibrox and Rangers are back in front Sensational, Clive. Sensational. He's always involved in the thicket, Alfredo Morelos. Bonabaric at this time with his right foot, keeping it live. Playing Kamara. He just walks his by Scott Brown again. You know, dropping his shoulder. I think he gets a wee bit of luck off his feet, but then it's just sheer quality, just sheer power for Alfredo Morelos, especially on his weaker side as well. Delighted for him. Morales was involved initially there, just keeping that alive, making himself available. Does it go between Brown's legs? Oh, I think it does. I think there's a nutmeg in there too. Yeah, through the legs. It's a wee bit luck as it comes off his heels, but then it's just sheer quality. Backing himself on his weaker side. Right, Pearson. Take us away. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to tease up there. Um, no, <laughs> that, that was... Um... Yeah, that was my favourite one. He obviously broke broke his hoodoo, if you want to call it, at Parkhead. Not that long before, in terms of the away game, and they won each one. But that 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 game was I think it was the second last game of the season. I'm sure it wasn't. It was Aberdeen. That was um, Scott Brown's fucking last dance. They were all saying, and for him to put it through Scott Brown's legs, and then lash it through. The bravest man at the back in terms of Chris Iyer, who ducks out of the way and right at the top of the net. It was brilliant, man. It was absolutely brilliant because they were down to ten. But they down, they were down to ten men at that point, I think, because um, who's your call get sent McGregor. off? McGregor. McGregor, McGregor, McGregor get sent off. He shot it and went off at park early. So <laughs> it was um, that oh, was brilliant for Morelos because that was the only thing they were clinging on to that season. Celtic in terms of oh, five, but Morelos hasn't scored against us. And he's done it, and he gets he just puts it right into them. And the wee salt celebration at the end, I just loved it, man, because he knows what he's doing. He's just noising them right up, and it was their last chance to to stop to stop anything in terms of us going unbeaten, and they couldn't do it. And the wee man was on the score sheet, and that was a great day. The only downside was it was during COVID times, and we all couldn't really watch it together. And we couldn't go to the pub afterwards. That was the only downside of it, but. Bloody great, man. I made sure my neighbours all knew because I put the windows right open and played um, Live It Up right after. So it was, uh, no, brilliant by the wee man. And I just hope he goes and scores a few more goals against them this season. Did I watch that game with you? No, you watched it with Jamie. Oh, so I did. I watched it with Jamie. I, oh, I know. I watched it for Jamie's window, actually, because I'm not allowed. I wasn't allowed in his house yet. That's right before any moon hill <laughs> dies, Mel. Um, yeah, I mean, this goal was just. It's so perfect. I mean, it's literally so perfect. Uh, it's it was almost written in the stars. That was the game that we absolutely ripped it. Absolute piss out of Celtic. Um, we really did. We we cemented our our rightful place at the, the top of the league. We um, showed why we were there. Showed why we were champions. And yeah. It was just superb. The way he cuts inside in Megs Brown, the wee obviously gets his wee bit of luck, yeah, but to absolutely smash it the way that he does. And that's what Alfredo does. He might not hit the ball cleanly all the time, but see when he does, he hits it with some amount of force, nearly rips the net open and the, the Salt Bay um, 
celebration. It will literally live forever. That will be a gift forever and ever and ever. Mm. If you search anything that's got a gift and put Alfredo Morelos, one of the first ones comes up is him doing the V Solby. It is absolutely tremendous. Uh, again, just the reason that you love Alfredo Morelos. It was a, a perfect goal and a perfect way to, to pretty much cement the, the last... Um, the last dance brigade, is that what they were calling themselves? The last dance, last whatever, dance. They were, whatever they were calling themselves. But aye, brilliant. Ryan, your thoughts on that goal? Uh, it was, it's underrated. It's so underrated, the finish. Is, um, I think it was a Sky I was watching. I, can, I remember the commentators just weren't giving it the credit it deserved. And it was such a good finish. And it's definitely the that's obviously the game that uh, secured Scott Brown's transfer to Aberdeen with that, that type <laughs> of performance. Um and to put it, I mean, putting it through his legs, it must, he must he must have dreamt about that, never mind us. Yeah. And the celebration, it's just everything you want for Alfie. He's got he's the only player that will do that. I'll come on to that in a minute, but he is the only player that will rub their faces in it because he he hates them the way we hate them, you know. Brilliant. I think he must go on a pitch before it and just look where every single camera is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It goes right fast score, I know where the camera is, I know what I need to do, because he's always seems to find the camera. It's actually sometimes when he scores as well, he starts running the, the wrong way and he realises that he's going the wrong way and turns on <laughs> and goes back to me because he knows where the camera is. The wee man is just absolutely tremendous. He really is. And yeah, that goal, again, that's... I, I generally just I can't get people that that don't love Alfredo Morelos. Okay, sometimes he's a wee bit of hat or miss, but as well to, to be realistic about it all, you've got to remember where we play football. We play in Scotland. This isn't exactly a well thought of league. We are a very well thought of club. Um, of course we are, but we're not exactly the most um, bigged up league in the world, if you like. So if it was that spectacular, if he was at the point where he, every time he got the ball, he was scoring. He, Probably wouldn't be playing here, so you have to you have to put a wee bit of realism into it. But yeah, that goal was it'll live with me forever. Um, just just brilliant, honestly. Everything that you could have wanted to happen, and I don't know how long he's been thinking about the Salt Bay thing, but he must have. If that just came to him there and then, it's absolute genius. It really is superb. <laughs> um, so nice one. Uh, I enjoyed that one, Ali. So Ryan, we'll move on to yours, mate. I will play the clip, and we see when the clip stops. You can talk, by the way. Like don't just do an Ali and just stare at me and wait for me to uh, tee him up. Um, <laughs> Ali, you've hosted podcasts before, man. Honestly. Anyway, Ryan, you go. Parasitch to deliver. And Balogun helped it on, and it's in from Alfredo Morelos. His derby day has come at last. His first Old Firm goal. Celtic really weak from the cross ball, but there's only one man on the move, and it's Morelos into that position. And he takes advantage of the, the header that wasn't going in. He made sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and they are left with nothing. Mm-hmm. That was the end of their season. They had nothing, as Ali said. They were holding on to this just bullshit claim. This, this, oh, I'll fail never score against Celtic. And if that's all they were left with, if, if he hadn't scored against them, that just shows what, what they are. But they might, their hearts must have broke when they seen it was him. I was at my, my best mates watching that and then um, just seen the ball hitting the back of the net. And they're jumping about, and his dog starts barking. And I started going, Is it Alfie? Is it Alfie? Is it Alfie? And I'm waiting the close up of him. And I was like, Is it Alfie? Is it Alfie? And I just jumped about like fucking crazy. And then when I heard the name, I went, It's fucking Alfie. It's Alfie. <laughs> and I was so happy for him because yeah, it was a thing. It definitely was a thing. It was a thing for him personally. But it was, it was becoming a thing because he'd missed so many chances. And it was just becoming game after game and the noise for him. You know how obsessed they can get with our players, but I was just so happy for him when he did that. It, ended, it just ended their se- season with anything they could have held on to. And like I said a few weeks ago, he's the only player that would have shoved it right up with him at that 10 or 55, both turning to the camera, turns away, and then obviously thinks to himself, I better make sure they actually got that, <laughs> and turns back and gives it again. It's just, it's fantastic. And Strikers in stick back post. McCoy says it all the time, hang about the back post, you'll get goals. And Alfie did it. It's a brilliant goal. Loved it. 
Yes, it was a great goal. And even that we bit a clip that we took there was from Sky Sports and you can hear the pain in Andy Walker having to say that Alfredo Morelos has scored against Celtic. It was uh, uh I I was glad he got I mean I didn't really doubt it. I knew at one point he would score against Celtic. I don't think there's really any doubt. I think he let it become a thing because he was getting himself too wound up in times yeah. um, during the old firm game. So he let it become a thing and he wanted to score that wee bit too much. And sometimes when he's like that he won't score. No matter what he does, he just won't score. We've seen that quite recently that he, he just couldn't have put the ball in the back of the net. But that one was uh, that was superb. And you're right, mate. He's the only person that would do the do the tens to the camera, um, do the fifty five to the camera, whatever way you want to look at it. He's the only one that would do it because he doesn't care. He really doesn't care. He knows they hate him, and he's quite happy to uh, to rub it in any any chance that he gets. I, I was so delighted for him, and you're right, it took away everything for him. That was the last little bit they had uh, against us. Oh, Fred Manilas hasn't scored against Celtic, but we bloody did that time as well. And then for Scott Brown at the end to say, oh, whoever it was at the back post, you know exactly who it was, and you didn't sleep very well that night. You know you the didn't. Pain. Uh, the pain. The pain. Absolute pain. So, Ali, your thoughts on that goal? No, it's brilliant. If I, we went into that game as champions, yeah, <laughs> that game was that game was in March as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, to be fair. That was the game. If they hadn't made an arse against Dundee United, that would have been the game for us to win the championship, which would have been even nicer to be honest. If Morelos had won us the title there with a goal, oh, but that'd be amazing. to go there as champions in March was uh, <laughs> was bizarre. To be honest, in March that early, but. No, that, that killed off everything. Andy Walker was gutted, man. I always remember um, Chris Boyd sitting, sure it was at Tynecast or something, and he's sitting there singing the, the Morelos song, Andy Walker, and Ailey Barber <laughs> sitting there going like, right, Chris, that's enough. And he was, he, he would just sat, he sang the whole song to Andy Walker, and his face was brilliant, man. And you know, when Chris Boyd that season, he just put it right into them as well, which was brilliant, but... No, for the wee man to score, break his hoodoo and Ryan's correct and so so you can in terms of it was a thing. He missed umpteen sitters. I mean, Carney, we were there for the the League Cup final and one of the most gutted gutting I've ever felt coming out in old fun in terms of we should have buried that game. Yeah. And he had a lot of chances at Morel. He missed a penalty obviously as well. And I from it come back and we always said, see when he got that one goal against him. Um, He'll go and score more, and he did, and um, that was brilliant. And it just sickened them even more. So, I no good choice, but I absolutely. And the thing is, as well, they're even they're scared of him now, as well. They are scared, of, right. they can't stand, they can't deal with it, they can't deal with Alfred Morello scoring against them, they really can't. But as well, I just as you were touching on Chris Boyd, there, I remember. At the end of the season as well, they were doing Andy Walker and Chris Boyd were doing their team of the season, and he's sitting and Andy Walker didn't put Morelos in. And Chris Boyd's sitting going, Andy Walker didn't put Alfredo Morelos, and he's best of the season. <laughs> absolutely tore into him, Boyd. He absolutely loves it. To be completely honest, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. I always knew he would do it, and now um, I expect him to score, to score even more against them, to be completely honest. Well, as he proved by Ali's choice, I suppose, by Megan Brown and uh, by in, in the roof of the net, it was a, a cracker. So we'll move on to Scotia's. Obviously, Scotia's too. Um, he's balls deep in um, manscape stuff right now. Um, his balls are thanking him, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, so he uh, he's not here, but he did pick a goal. And there's a, a bit of a story behind this one, so I'll play the wee clip now. Moment from the goalkeeper. Um, just madness. I mean, Steve Knight, what's he thinking about? I mean, if you watch Manelis, he doesn't even get up that quickly. Now, if he'd got up really quickly and got to his feet and taken the ball off him, you could maybe, just maybe, have cut Scott Fox a little bit, uh, a bit of slack. But, I mean, look, he comes back on his left, wrong decision, he's have played it out of the park. And what's he doing? I mean, dear me. Yeah. And Ross County have just changed things, changed yeah. the formation, trying you to get back in the game. You can't legislate for that. You can't legislate. You know, ultimately, players have to make decisions and write decisions and do things with sharpness. Scott Fox didn't even look to see what, you know, where Morelos was. At no stage did he even glance to see if he's... So that one was quite a few years ago. That was against um, Ross County. Uh, I can't remember what season that was in. It was a Puma top, so I don't even remember what year that was. Ali, what year was it? Can you mind? It was Cachinho's first season. Um, Cachinho's first season. So it would be 2017, is it? 
16, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, obviously it was against Ross County. It's when Alfredo Morelos caught, caught out the fox in the box and stole it off the goalkeeper and buried it away. But I don't think Scotia didn't pick it due to um, the quality of the goal, or the meaning of the goal, even behind that. Um, it was the story that we've had. We've probably told this story before on the podcast, but we've, we've had quite a few new subscribers, so we shall tell it again. I'd met Ali in Scotia uh, that weekend, actually, in Berlin. Um, um, I was on a stag do um, for the wee Dick Mahal's um, stag. And, yeah, I'd met him and we went to the Union Berlin game on the Sundays. Now, I was burst, to say the least, on the Sunday. I was really, really struggling. Got the Union Berlin game, though. Got a bit of a lift out of that, to be honest. What a stadium, by the way. If you're ever in Berlin and you get a chance to go to the Union Berlin stadium, it is quite an experience. Uh, it was absolutely superb. Ali, what was it like? You walked like a, you walked down like a yeah. forest path? So, nah, it's like, it's through, like, through a forest and stuff to this, and then the stadium just appears, and they've obviously got all the beers, all the food. Uh, they do it differently. All the food stalls, it's brilliant, but a cracking wee stadium, and they were in um, kind of low. They're obviously they're in the top league now, but they were in the lower league at that point, and it was yeah. uh, a great. We honestly, if if you're ever in Berlin, I would choose that one to go to because it was a wee bit different. Definitely, I mean they've got three standing stadiums. We were in a corner right next to their away fans, and every time yeah. they were singing, we were obviously trying to sing Ranger songs along with the songs they're singing. <laughs> but it just they weren't quiet the whole game. I don't remember really watching much of the football. I was just kind of in awe of the way the, the stadium that was. Anyway, we're not talking about that. Uh, so halfway through, about halfway through the second half, or something like that, we were like, we need to leave because Rangers are kicking off, so we need to go find a boozer to try and watch the Ross County game. So me, Ali and Scotia left. Scotia at this point is pretty worse for wear. He was he was getting there. I was peaks and troughs of a hangover um, on the, kind of the, the third day of drinking. We got the train back into, I can't remember where we were going. What's it called? I can't remember what that place was called. Alexander Platz. Alexander Platz, that's the one. Uh, we are getting the train back into there. And as we're get, going back, the train stops and everybody starts getting off. I'm like, this isn't our stop. But the, this lassie that was there, under, we obviously spoke English and could hear that we were speaking English. And she was like, you have to get off the train. I'm like, no idea where we were. We literally had no clue where we were. Into this train station. Ali, obviously, I don't know if any of you have really picked up on this. Ali gets quite, quite angry sometimes. Um, so we were trying to then obviously figure out how we were going to get from there to the pub that Ali had very kindly found us to watch the Ross County game. Now this, I have never been in a, a train station like it. You couldn't get out the train station. There was no <laughs> way out of this train station. We did a loop about three times, and I was like, we're at exactly the same platform we were at the last time we came up here. At this point, Scotia is pissing himself laughing because Ali's getting absolutely furious. Eventually find an exit, get outside. I was like, there'll be a taxi outside, mate. Don't worry about it, we'll get a taxi. Walked outside, there was not a taxi. We actually it was like we walked into a building site, really. Remember, yeah, like underneath, underneath the bridge and that was getting done. <laughs> I had to walk, I don't know how far we walked, about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Why? Eventually, 50, yeah. eventually flagged on a taxi, got in the taxi. First thing Ali says to the guy who's in the taxi, do you know who Glasgow Rangers are, mate? Do you know, do you know who Glasgow Rangers are? Guy doesn't speak a word of English. Ali's just pointing at a place on his phone to get to. Oh, yeah. And then Ali, we got to the pub. You can take it from here, mate. Yeah, I was pretty stressful to be honest because I like to be in time for a lot of things. Probably, probably <laughs> because of my job, because I always make appointments to see people. But um, I, we, I was looking at the time and going, "Oh no, we're going to be a bit late here." But I, we got there, we got there, and um, like six minutes, it kicked off, and I was it was the Ross County game, and Rangers went. I think they went one up, Rangers, and did a goal, two 0 two one. Big Herrera scored as well. Actually, That's a, a great, goal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, that's how far it's going back. And in fact, halfway through, I think it was the first half, some big, I think he was Australian or something, obviously. <laughs> he was um, backpacking and working in Berlin for a couple of shots. <laughs> Decided to turn our game off and put on some English game, yeah, <laughs> which, was okay. wrong, which was the wrong idea after we had a, a mission to get there. And we um, politely told him to get that fucking, <laughs> get the fucking Rangers game back on now, <laughs> which he did. But it was... Um, I no, it was a good one, and we were all bust to be fair. But no, um, that Morelos goal was a. Uh, I it's good because it's a it's a memory of how 
we all actually met in terms of through a stag do because we like I say, I never knew you, Carney, before that. So yeah, you probably yeah. you probably wish you never came in that stag do. <laughs> no, no, of course, <laughs> of course I don't, mate. Um, Ryan, do you have any memories of that goal? I've got plenty of memories of Berlin, Ben Gast and Berlin, but um, in terms of that, in terms of that goal, no, it just reminds me of how much I used to hate Alfie's hair. It used to really wind me up. See when he went through that phase of the half fringe and these yeah. used to drive me crazy. But no, it's a great goal. He's a striker's instinct and that goalkeeper should be short. It really shouldn't be for just allowing him to get in like that. But um I didn't know it was that far uh, I didn't know it was Herrera, I didn't know it was back then. I thought it was only a couple of years ago. He actually and scored, it was like a flick. flick. It was like a wee flick that he'd done to score it, I'm sure, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God. No, I don't, uh, I actually didn't know Herrera scored for us. I just remember seeing him kicking about uh, in Bracasso and other <laughs> Scottish tourist attractions. <laughs> That's all he ever done, wasn't it? He was just always at a castle and that. Uh, big, yeah. The big man loved it. Oh, he was handsome though, he was a handsome big fella, he really was. But uh, no, I just used to kick about castles and that. He was awful, honestly. He was maybe we could do that. That's a good idea, actually. See, like maybe the international break after this, we could do a Herrera like tourist attraction pod. <laughs> what your favourite tourist attraction <laughs> is, was. Oh, what moody picture did Herrera put up on his Instagram this week? Yeah, uh, definitely. But aye. Um, no, that was good. I enjoyed that. Um, let us know in your comment in the comments. Obviously, what goal is, is your favourite um, out of the ones we've picked? And if it's not one of the, one one of the ones we have picked, then um, choose. Let, let us know what ones is your favourite. Um, I'm not sure if any any will be Scotia's. Obviously, that's quite personal to us. But it wouldn't really shock me from the picked the Scotia's one. Um, ah, it's just. Alfredo Morelos to us is um, he's kind of everything. Um, he is to me certainly as well. I love the man. I absolutely adore him. Yeah, I know Jamie adores him. Jamie named his dog after him as well. And yeah, as Ali mentioned earlier, me and Ali do the the Alfie celebration to each other every time he scores. Um, which people must find pretty weird. I've never even really thought about what people must think we're doing when Alfie scores and me and you are pointing at each other. But yeah, that'll do. So yeah, let us know. Yeah, let us know what your um what your thoughts are. Um, so we'll move on, lads. We'll move on to the preview of the Bromby game. Um, so obviously we've got quite a big tie coming up on Thursday evening. Quarter to six kickoff, am I correct? Yes, quarter to six. Yep. Yeah. Quarter to six kickoff. Um, so Bromby, since the defeat to us, they've actually won their last two games, beating Copenhagen and Viborg, uh, 2-1 and 2-0 respectively, or 1-0 respectively, I think. Doesn't matter. Uh, but they are bottom of the Europa League group, so this is a kind of must-win game for them as well. Ryan, what's your thoughts ahead of the game on Thursday night? I'm very confident now after, after Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do. I did. I'll be honest. I fancied before Sunday. I just think that, that I've seen signs of of what happened on Sunday. I've seen signs of that against Bromby at home. Just nice passages of play. Players are getting a bit more confidence. We need to win as well. And I didn't see much for Bromby that kind of gave me the fear. I didn't really feel as if they had much quality and not be disrespectful to them. But yeah, I, I think if we can we can get turn it on, we'll, we'll get three points and. Um, That'll set us in a good position to get into the what slat it's the Sparta Sparta. game then it's Sparta then Leon, isn't it? Yeah. I mean that if we get three points against Bronby, that Sparta game's gonna be electric. It will be absolutely bouncing Ibrox for that it's because obviously the the carry on that's went on. But yeah, I, I'm quite confident getting into it. I think we can win and I think we can win convincingly as well. Yeah. Um Ali, I wouldn't want to be in the the Bromby um training room if you like while they're sitting watching Rangers last game back because they're going to need to watch us scoring six pretty fantastic goals Yeah, they're, they're getting us hitting top form at the weekend there I'm the same as Ryan I'm, I'm confident which I don't like to be honest but I feel really <laughs> confident but uh, no, no, but all jokes say that, no, I'm I'm confident what I, when, what I said to you after the, the game at Ibrox, kind of, they didn't strike any fear into me, Bromby average team that we've played in Europa League, they're, they're along the lines of some of these other teams have played. The kind of pop four teams, you want to say, but no, nah, they don't strike fear into me. To me, a point, no, nah, points not used to us. It needs to be a win. You hope Leon do the business and then it sets up for if we beat um, Sparta, that's us through. 
and it doesn't matter what happens in the Leon game. So, I if that all goes for us, um, that, that, that that's good. But no, Bromby don't they don't strike fear into me, and Rangers should be flying at the moment. And um, we've only if you think about it, the international break coming up after Sunday, so we've only got two games. So to me, let's empty the tank in the two games and then have a rest. So no, nah, they don't strike fear at me, Bromby. I'm the same as Ryan. I'm, I'm very confident we will get the three points there on, on Thursday. Yeah, everything you said is absolutely spot on, mate. This, these three points could, could not puts puts us in a very good position, especially if Leon beats Sparta. Puts we then go second, um, if I'm right, because I think uh, Sparta are on four, we're also on three. Um, so Bromby really have to win. So I'd imagine they'll come at us, which. Well, you've said a million times before, sometimes suits Rangers, sometimes it suits when a team actually go at us, but it also leads to games like we had against Benfica, which is not good for your heart rate. So um, we'll see. I don't think Bromby are anywhere near Benfica, obviously. Uh, I, I'll go along with you, the, what you've both said. They didn't show much to me when we were seeing them at Ibrooks. There's not a lot there that I thought, oh, he looks decent, he looks good, he looks dangerous. They all They looked very... Bland, if that's in the kind of way to say it, they, they didn't they didn't really have anything about them. Um, I know they've been struggling for form. They're still sitting sixth in the league, even though with their two wins that they've just got. So they're not in the uh, the greatest of form. And yeah, to, to have to sit down and watch us absolutely demolish Motherwell um, and go <laughs> team talk, right, lads? I mean, we ain't play them that are absolutely flying right now. It's going to be a tough one for them, I think. But I, I fully expect Rangers to get. I uh, to get the one. Um, I think it's important that we do. Uh, I just I don't want any kind of last. I don't want to have to get anything off of Leon. Put it that way because Leon could just show up and probably give us a bit of a doing if they wanted to. So because they're they're a particularly good team. So um, we'll move on to what we think the teams are going to be. Um, Ali, do you want to go first? Yep, exact same team as Sunday. I couldn't agree more, mate. I've written exactly. I have put exactly. unchained, team, unchained team. Exactly. T- to me, m- momentum is everything, and and that Rangers team for the weekend, it clicked. I thought Scott Arfield brought a balance to the midfield as well. I thought Sakala offered that pace and threat up front, unpredictable, unpredictable at times as well, which is good. To me, you need to go with the same team. And again, if Rangers get, as we say, the three points against Bromby. I play the same team again against Ross County because you got the international break. So it's the same team. And I'd be surprised if Ryan doesn't go with the same team as well for, for Thursday night. But he might, Ryan. you never know. He might have a weak curveball, you never know. Maybe. Ryan? Aye, it's the exact same team for me. I've been wanting Gerard <laughs> to stick stick with the same team for, for a few weeks now. Um, I said a couple of weeks ago, I think it's important because... The stage of season we're at and the run of games we've got now, I think it's important he does get us a more settled team. And I know we've had injuries and he's got to watch for COVID and he's got to manage Davis and things like that. But I think it's so important that he keeps a consistent team and we're a winning team now off the back of that and Sunday night. Yeah, I, I expect him to go with the same team um, on Thursday. Yep. Yeah, I think as well, we obviously played at noon on Sunday, so there's been quite a bit of time from then till, till this game, so I think it might eliminate any need to rotate, unless it's down to a knock or injury or anything like that. Uh, I expect I expect the same team, to be honest. Arfield has been pretty good in Europe for us, to be honest. He's he's, he's tend to showing up for us. And the way the midfield operated, we are able a wee bit further forward, Sakala and Morelos kind of firing, then, yeah, I, I just I literally said... Unchanged, unchanged team for me. I just don't expect there to be a change. Look, we'll probably be wrong. He's probably going to rotate fucking eleven players or something like that. But I think it'd be really good to see. Um, I think it'd be rewarding for players like Arfield for Sakala to get two starts in a row. Um, obviously Arfield's pretty fresh. Let's be honest. He's not played a lot of football, so he's he may not he's maybe not fully up to match fitness, but he didn't really show much of it against Motherwell on Sunday. I thought he was pretty good after watching the game back. He did a lot of good work and he just offers a wee bit Arfield's not scared. I think that's one thing I'll say about Scott Arfield. He is not frightened to play a pass that might not happen for him. Because I, I really I think on uh, Sunday Nine out of the ten passes that he tried worked. They really did. Uh, he played a few really good passes to get us quite central and quite in an advanced, dangerous position. So 
yeah, I think they all deserve to to get a run out again. Um, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Obviously, the press conference will be tomorrow. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Ryan Kent will maybe make the bench. Uh, that'd be quite nice to see. And I was hopefully... I was a bit I was literally about, sorry I was literally about to say that, Carney. You can feel you know you can have a bigger bench in Europe, so mm-hmm. it wouldn't surprise me if Ryan Kent or even your man Ryan Jack. Oh, don't say that! Don't say that. Don't might say be that. on that bench because you can you can feel a, a big bench. So yeah, I think so. I wouldn't be surprised if you see their two names on it, which again would give us a a lift. We don't need a lift, but it would give us an an added lift. Even just seeing them, even if they don't come on, even just on the bench. Is Ryan Jack in the Euro squad? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he is. Think he is. Do, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Good. That kind of shows you then. They probably thought they had a chance of really making an appearance at some point. I think he would have to have been included, to be completely honest, though. Um, but yeah, I mean, that'd be really good to see what a lift as well, even for the team, um, to have somebody like Ryan Jack in about the, the even the, the warm up and the changing room again, same as Ryan Kent, to see off oh, Kent's on the bench and whatever else. And yeah, um, things are looking good. I say you can, and you can still make five subs in Europe as well. So yeah, yeah, fingers crossed we see them make the bench. So, score predictions, Ryan, I'll come to you first, mate. What do you think the score's going to be? I think we'll concede again, but I think Rangers will win 3-1. I'll first goal. Mm-hmm, but we nice will one. concede again. We know it's going to happen, <laughs> but it's just we'll go down 1-0, that's what will happen, and then... <laughs> it, Never win, no Never concern, win 6-1. No, no concerns, as long as we win the game, but I, it's... Yes, we'll win. That's what we'll do. We'll get three points. Ali? I think we'll concede as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's not been negative, but we like to we like to give an early Christmas present moment, Rangers. So mm, I hope they prove us wrong, but I'm going to go slightly more cagey. I think Bromby, they really need three points. So I think I'll go 2 1 Rangers. Okay, um, I'm going to show a bit more confidence. I'm going to go for 2 0. Rangers, I don't think we'll concede. I think Sunday is going to give a lift. I think we'll start defending the way we have been before. I think the, the team will be flying in confidence. And a win like Sunday can really do a world of good um, for everyone involved at the club, to be completely honest. Coaching staff as well. It's a bit of a relief for everybody that we've finally put in a performance that we recognise. And we recognise Rangers at their, their, at their pretty much their best. So I'm going to go for 2-0, I'm going to go Morelos first, and I'm going to say Joe Aribo, because he's going to be playing a wee bit further forward. Uh, so Aribo and Morelos, for me, don't care what way it is, as long as it's three points. So yeah, looking forward to it now, to be honest. I really now start talking about it, I cannot wait for it. And um, that'll do us for tonight, gentlemen. It's uh, something a wee bit different for everybody tonight. Uh, as I say, it was a, a pod that we wanted to, to do. Um, I think it was important to... Um, Shine a limelight on Alfredo Morelos a wee bit, um, give him the give him the time in the spotlight because uh, he's certainly certainly done wonders for us. So yeah, Ali, thank you very much, mate. No problem. That was a good pod. Pity Scotia wasn't here. I know he was manscaping. So I hope that <laughs> I hope that machine um, could uh, I take 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 all Scotia's um, all all his hair he's got in his body. So we'll find out in terms of what happened with Scotia and his. His manscaping experience. I know he did have the deodorant on his balls on uh, Saturday <laughs> night. So, uh, but I will find out for Scotia how he got. Yeah, on. looking forward to it. You may not even recognise him next time you see him for that. Nah. One. Uh, Ryan Haymarsh, thanks very much, my man. Cheers, boys. I really enjoyed that. Um, just realised I've went for about fifty minutes without um, singing that fast Sakala song. <laughs> oh, no, I don't say that. Um, <laughs> What's the tune go like again? Uh, <laughs> I'm away you to so my, I know, geez, I know. I'm away <laughs> up to update my Tinder profile and make sure the girls know that I am manscaped your balls and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh magic. Yes, I shall I should know. Uh, Club at 22, supported by Manscaped. The best of men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Go to manscaped.com, get 20% off plus free shipping with code Club at 22. Your balls will thank you. We should do a wee tee up at the end when I'm about to say that, and we should all say it at the same time. Um, but yeah, as I just say, you would be supporting our podcast if you use that code. And um, we could not thank you enough if you do decide to do that. 
we're not just saying it generally honestly the stuff is pretty amazing <laughs> honestly it is really really good yeah, it really i was i was pleasantly surprised about how good the stuff is it really is cracking so um you would you'd be supporting our podcast uh, it would really mean a lot to us uh finish with a shameless plug as always uh please subscribe to the youtube channel like the videos give us a wee five star rating on apple podcasts like uh share leave a comment anywhere that you can and also let us know what your favorite alfredo morello school is uh we will be back on thursday um with a club reaction pod after the game so thank you to listening for us until we speak to you again next time we are club at 22 the champions podcast cheers everybody <laughs>